State, Athens, Georgia. It's the Ratio Podcast, live featuring Johnny Ray. We are coming to you live from the lab at Cine, Athens only independent art house cinema. Tonight's show features musical sweetheart Seth Martin, a peek inside the Elephant Six documentary Athens premiere, and so much more. I'm Jack Slate, inviting you to come with us and enjoy tonight's edition of the Ratio Podcast Live. Mr. Jack Slayton. Jack said, uh, why don't we get till 420? Let's have a 419 party. Yeah. So I know everybody's putting out their snoops on a stoop. And uh, this one was given, we're going to put this guy right here. And uh, there we go. And that was given to me by my love, Melinda, who's also our stage manager tonight. Everybody give it up for Melinda. <laughs> yeah, we got a fun party for you tonight. We, uh, Seth Martin's back in town. Like, hell right. Hell right. Like straight from the lake, you know. So uh, we'll have him up here in a little bit to talk about Saturday morning cartoons, his new uh, long player. But yeah, this is the one that my dearly departed mother would have turned off like immediately. This is our weed episode. So we're going to be talking about marijuana a little bit. Or I'm really trying to push this grass let's start can we please start just calling it grass again is everybody in like favor of that yeah all right well my name is johnny ray i am a self-proclaimed stoner i love marijuana i love weed and it took me until about my mid-30s when when us asshole men start drinking a lot and we realize huh, this is what life really is that's when i realized that was my vice of choice and let's go back a little bit before that, though. So as soon as you realize, you know, probably about nine or ten for me, that eventually you're going to have to take the edge off some way. Okay, and that doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol. That could be crocheting, bird watching, or, you know, strumming little Robin Redbreast on a ukulele. But whatever it is, you know, it's something that's like a vice and something that, you know, fills your time. I like to smoke a little grass. That fills my time. But uh, as I was growing up, at the end of cartoons on Saturday, you know, it would invariably cut to a group of people sweating in a stadium, okay? Um, they're just, you know, they're out there going, oh, it's hot, the sun's beating down, and then just tracks fucking materialize out of nowhere. And here comes the silver bullet train right through Beer, alcohol, all these things were just pushed. It was almost impossible not to be a victim of it if you grew up in the 80s or the 90s. So, you know, I fooled around with alcohol a lot of years. I, I'm not drinking now. I haven't been for a little while. Yeah, thank you. And I've got a lot of friends that are the same way, but I am what I call Athens sober. So let's talk about that term a little bit. We have a special flavor for that, like we do everything else here in Athens. Uh, but Athens sober, much like California sober, is I don't drink, but I smoke weed. Okay, so Athens sober, you know, we start with that baseline. We, we, we don't drink, but we smoke weed. We smoke enough weed to kill a horse. And maybe from time to time, we take a little mushroom. You know, like maybe once a month, nothing crazy, you know, something like that, just like once a month. So we, we don't drink, we smoke weed, enough weed to kill a horse, and we take mushrooms every now. Okay? Or, you know, we also, you know, you know, if you've got a friend who has some like extremely pure gel tab acid sitting in the freezer or something, you know, we might do that as well. And by the way, anybody that's tuning in right now on psychedelics, you're right, we know. And we're talking about it. Or we're pointing at you. So enjoy your trip. I, I'm just teasing. Please settle back down, you know, cold, damp, compress, forehead, like I kind of need right now. 
But um, yeah, so after and sober is, is kind of an amended thing, which we were talking about all this lately, and that brings us, you know, it's first of all, it's insane to me that marijuana is not legal nationally, internationally. I mean, I think for some people it should be mandatory. But it's crazy to me in this day and age that um, that's not the situation that it's not legal ever. So we polled some folks and uh, we came up with some uh, stoner shit that uh, these are some of the uh, observations that we uh, found while out on the town. Uh, number one, you ask anyone who offers you any dessert, is there weed in it? <laughs> I mean your grandma. You know, you've got to be prepared. You know the perils of this situation. So, number two, you find yourself at a stranger's wedding. A stranger's wedding, this has happened to all of us. And you're sitting there and you're thinking through the whole thing. You're like, when is this bullshit going to be over? And I can go outside and smoke some weed, you know. And where can I do that? You know, you start looking like, the pants look pretty cool. They're like around my age. You know, they get hot, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, you don't waste any travel plans on anything that doesn't involve a legal state. You know, I mean, your parents could be doing a, a family reunion, you're like, eh, I don't know, it's in Missouri. You know, um, but is Missouri, like, I mean, hell, Missouri might be legal right now. I don't have these things memorized. That's a whole different podcast. Um, when you land in a legal state, um, Uber discussions always go this way. Uh, you get out of the airport, you get in the car, and uh, the guy it, it immediately try and go, hey, man, you think it'd be cool if we uh, stopped by a dispensary on the way uh, to the hotel? And, uh, you know, is that even legal? Can we do that? You know, you're, you're so like, oh, yeah, we'll be in and out, bam, you know. And uh, we always pull that off, don't we, Jack? Okay. Okay. So, let's see. A couple more. The number of lighters you own is bewildering and bizarre, okay? It's ever evolving. You either have zero lighters or nine. And I mean, if you clean your, 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 your couch out, it's like lighter Christmas or something, like, you know? I always find like 40, and I'm like, God damn, that's where all those lighters are. But uh, you can never have too many. But, but speaking of that, and uh, last but not least, God forbid, you have friends that bring their children. <laughs> okay, hold on. Or, God forbid you have friends that bring their children over, or you have to host a family event. That is a two week long cleaning process. You're like scraping THC off the, the, the ceiling like somebody's working on the Chrysler building or something. But that's enough of that stoner shit. How are you doing, Jack Slate? Doing well, doing well. Good, good. We've got a lot of cool things that have been happening here at Cine Athens. I did mention, everybody give it up for Cine. We're here recording live at Cine. Uh, recently, a group of our friends uh, premiered the Elephant Six documentary here at Cine Athens, which is on the best of the and I highly recommend it. Everybody should go see this. It's super inspiring. It's amazing. And uh, we were here at the premiere, and we did a little report. So uh, here it is. Whoops. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cine here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, where we have the premiere of the Elephant Six Recording Company here tonight. And I'm telling you, the building is just full of legends. Are you having a good time at this show? Yeah. A lot of cool people, a lot of uh, just beautiful weirdos. Let's go talk to a few. Hey, everybody, we're here with Andrew Rieger of the Mighty Elf Power and a member of the Elephant Six Collective. I just want to ask you, how special is it to have a someone to be so inspired that they made a documentary on something you created? That's amazing. I mean, I'm just like, uh, Anybody gets a shit about the time. It's really, really, really uh, flattering. Yeah. Right, right. I think the movie was fantastically successful at capturing this 
something that was big. Was the good thing was you were able to catch it. It feels very good. There's both, there's an uh, Elton Zinc's book called Endless Endless. Uh, and now there's a movie. Um, it just feels good that Interpunk has always had a lot of momentum going for it, but that there's some light being shed on all these other projects. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little overwhelming. It's really. It's, it's a film that like people didn't see footage of these people at the time. There were never, there was never a music video or an MTV appearance by me from the hotel. There was never an Olivia Trimble control uh, performance on Fountain or anything. Like, like, there were bands that you know you you read print interviews with that were pretty fragmented and, and obscure. And photographs they had masks and, and things on top of them. So, so this is a first chance to really see them in their 20s, being alive in 1995, making music and and putting all this stuff together and kind of talking openly about how the series made. Who was the best cook? Probably Aaron Wayland, who was uh, Howard's drummer early on, and then he went to MDK as a professional chef in LA. Uh, that would have to be Will David, uh, Lenny and Laura Hetzler, who now goes by Lulu Hetzler. Okay. Um, and at the potlucks it talks about in the movies, she would always cook some of the just the most mouth-watering stuff. It's like the third for a long time. For a long time. Andrew and I lived together. We, we used to share recipes. You know, oh God, Andrew's pretty good, but Aaron was just a lot to go into that stew we will have when we said that. Of all the Elephant Sings folks, who had the best meat? Robert Schneider. There we go. See, that was a. Or maybe John Penn is a close second. Oh, God. Okay. Coachella, 
And I, I bring this up because I was on Twitter that night, they didn't do the live feed, and I've never seen people lose their fucking minds over a work of art that maybe didn't go exactly as planned. And uh, I felt like he got vehemently uh, put down. And if you watch the songs, he was amazing. I was telling Lindsay about it, like, amazing. So let's all give it up for Frank Ocean. I hope he gets better this resident of ankle injuries. And uh, hey, we hope to have him here one day on the Ray Show podcast. But let's get to tonight. Um, tonight we have a rap scallion that, that most of y'all know, and a real sweetheart, and just a super cool dude. Every, dude, everybody give it up for Seth Martin.
Chase Park with Henry, and then cut a gypsy farm, and then uh, that was the end of the district. Right, right. Well, uh, what does this area mean to you? I mean, what is it? Like, uh, like a birthing ground for so much friendship and creativity and, uh, and, and so romantic to me. Like, I would come here on dates in school and, like, uh, come here and party, like, sneaking into a, it's like a tattoo shop now, but it's like beside a donut shop and a bake shop down on, uh, on Broad down there. It was like, we'd sneak into it and uh, some dude from the county over from us, brother home there or something, he let us in, we are like 14, 15. So that was like, it's just asking so many things to me, you know. Um, well, the beginning of your you know, it's a criminal career there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, I love that you saw these like, yeah, like, yeah, I went to friends, I like, went inside to a place. I mean, I was in a place, but I'm sure it's all right. Too hard. But it, musically, it means it means a whole lot too. I mean, going to see shows at Flicker Bar, and California Lounge, and Little Kings, and here, and um, house shows, and just it, it meant the world to be able to start a band from scratch, and with your friends who you met at service industry jobs, or that you met at a show, and just roll that into kind of what your whole life is. You know, and it, it should, I didn't know that yet through creativity, and that had always been there in sports with me, you know, but finding that with folks that were working jobs, that were mainly manual labor gigs, and then spending their free time that they did have on something that was bigger than them, you know, so Athens, Athens is such a, a a place where that can happen. Oh yeah, I totally agree. What uh, sports did you play? Everything, everything. Just like everything. Football, Chaplain, baseball, football. basketball. I played track. I still use the track stuff every day. Like I go running. Yeah. <laughs> but I still use like all that, all that stuff. There's so much character for at least for my experience because that was all there was. Like I didn't have anything else. So that's, that's what we did. And uh, looking back on it now, I mean, I totally threw it off, like, around college, like, when I discovered, early discovered music uh, and getting stoned and stuff like that, you know. It's like sports and shit, that's a bummer. And then now that I've gotten so many creativity, I'm like, what are all these lessons about uh, the team effort and, like, seeing through the end, the work ethic, all that shit, where did it come from? It came from a mixture of you know, my folks and in sports and just that camaraderie. Um, and that's still there with like anybody I work with, you know. Um, but it just, it showed itself that way for me and does it differently for everybody. And it's just cool that we're in a place where that can all blend. And I, I think we're always a special uh, place for me for so many reasons. Right, right, right on. Well, you're up in the big city of Nashville now. How's that going? Did you like walk into town with a 10 gallon hat and just, yeah. <laughs> I've, had, uh, I've had friends up there for a long time, like Justin and Jack, and we go and see them, like, and play shows with them, like, three or four times a year for the last five or six years. And we had a tour booked, and um, it was like 48 shows across the country. Um, and pandemic squash that so it's like all these songs that we were gonna play on the road let's cut them when we can all get together and uh that's where the record came and then i was living out in Oakford county and working uh as a caretaker just cutting down trees and painting chairs and uh you know caring for the animals and stuff the dog and the cat <laughs> <laughs> hard work yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Rick Pauls, who managed George Theater, um, told me, he's like, man, you need to get up here. And, and uh, about that time, Justin and them were pushing me on it too, and I would always have certain things lined up, and just everything kind of fell together in like one day, really. And so I'm just so grateful and, and lucky. And, um, and it, it, my friends who were there just uh, 
but the whole community welcomed me in such a beautiful way. You know, it sounds like a dream come true. Come on up to Nashville, cut a record. You know, it just that's so badass. And to do it with the people I did it with, like Kyle Walsh on drums, like I've said forever, just in in like sitting around talking and like, man, my two favorite drummers ever, are Sweet Dog and Kyle Walsh. Sweet Dog from the Dex teams, Kyle Walsh and Justin and the Cosmos. And I've played with Kyle Walsh now. We did that Saturday night and the record. Right on, man. Yeah. So fortunate. Well, what's it like up there? Do you like get down there? What do you do? Do you just go out to the shows or you just go out and wave at people? What do you do? The, uh, I go to the park in the morning. You do my run and all that shit. Shelter Bottoms. It's a 900 acre um, wetland preserve. I go out there and then I work. Go to a show. Put on your spurs and then go out. Hang out, the music hang out with the fool around gang, my buddies, man. Right. Like Justin, and, uh, Justin and Jack are so inspiring to me. Like uh, two dudes that uh, just believe, man. They believe. The same that we were talking about earlier with you and uh, and Jack and y'all's whole crew. That like, you know, there's this thing of like adult creativity being a passion and a focus throughout life that when you see it with people it's beautiful and and there's certain folks in this room right now that have it in and i can see it in their eye and that is all that matters that that's where our vessel for creativity you don't make us all cry <laughs> 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 Well, to see to see, uh, to see that as something that folks want to do is just so inspiring, and that's something I think about or try to think about. Right, right. Well, right on, man. Well, you know, let's let's turn to a little bit of a more serious subject. We'll, we'll talk about movies in a little bit about cast <laughs> babies. Yeah, we, uh, um, but you know, how are things in Tennessee right now? How are people healing after these these unprecedented tragedies? Just I think folks are really using it as a rallying point to be to be like these are our ideals and this is what we stand behind and this is where we want to go with it because it's really starting a movement locally like to see the amount of people that went to just uh, the hearings packed couldn't get one person in one person out for hours and hours and uh, to see all the folks at the march and it's going to happen every week like every Monday until some shit changes uh -huh. and, uh, and these cats man Justin Jones he, he was like been at this for a while um, and and he was arrested for peacefully demonstrating like several times before he was in office and to hear him and uh, Representative Pearson speak it is like nothing I've ever seen, or, or just the emotion that they can transfer and the ideas they're talking about is, it's a movement. And, right. and, and it's getting attention and interaction. And, uh, and just being around that, and just, uh, for me, it's just showing up and, and just being there and being witness to it. Because like, you know, I'm fresh in the town and just being around and, and looking and seeing what it means to that community is kind of my role there. Right, right. Well, uh, well I'm, glad that, uh, I'm glad that you're up there. I think you're, you're a good person to be there, you know, and let's say hello to everybody in Tennessee. There's wonderful people up there, you know, that are whoop, doing great things, you know. And, uh, but you're going to play a little bit of music. Uh, but, I, you know, before we get with that, you know, me and you had some good times. And, uh, you know, I, got I, I remember a July 4th where I uh, got a trivia home. And, Has uh, anybody seen the movie Training Day? <laughs> <laughs> we were going like 16 miles an hour. Let me just, let me just tell you. It was like that. I mean, so, uh, you know, I go on to see a show, get family band, they played, it was a uh, great show, get done at the end of the night, me and Johnny hanging out, like, you, should, you should finish that one by yourself, just lit it up, handed it to me, you should finish that one. Uh, so I do that, 
And then like 20 minutes later, I can't see straight and I can't drive, I can't walk. Johnny like essentially carries me to his car. We get in the car and going home and he's laughing his fucking head off at me. And I'm not laughing that hard. Come on. <laughs> I got my head off the window. I'm like, oh man, save me. And, uh, I remember, I think I, I think I threw up out the window a couple times. So. <laughs> uh, and that was a uh, you know, real bonding moment. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I have never, um, I've never had anything like that happen before. And I told him after, I said, Johnny, I could smoke a pickup truck full a week and be straight. And I have never smoked one joint and been in a training day. But right. I was getting training. Well, yeah. It was so much fun. This is all heresy. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, man, I'm so glad you came down. You're going to play some music for us? Absolutely. All right, everybody. Yeah. everybody at Cine and the Ratio Podcast and Johnny. It's so damn fun. But I'm here called Beautiful Sin.
heard this song. Uh, I learned it from a guy up in Alaska, and he said he learned it from somebody in Louisiana, and they said that they, when they really got down to it, that they had learned it from me.
you go follow Seth on the uh, Instagram. Come down here, man. That was amazing. So, uh, Renee, where's the best place to get this uh, record? It is on the Bandcamp, it's on the Spotify, it's on the YouTube, it's on the Apple Music, it's on every one of them, baby. There we go, man. Well, thanks so much for doing this. Everybody, give it up for Seth. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming out tonight. Uh, we're going to take a couple of months off of the live show, but the podcast regular will be coming back, and we'll be back in July with a very, very special guest. So, um, I want to say happy birthday to my dog, Charlie. Yeah. And, uh, also, I would like to tell everybody to enjoy the rest of 419, 420, smoke all the weed, be safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Yeah. Ratio Podcast details at ratiopodcast.com. For more information about CNA and the lab space, please visit atlascene.com. This is Jack Slayton saying good night and don't do anything dramatic. <laughs>